Every time I do a video on RGB fans, I just get more and more questions on more and more RGB fans. You think I would have learned my lesson by now, but fortunately for you, I'm a slow learner. So this time around, we'll be taking the Thermaltake Ring Plus 12 RGB fans for a spin to see if they blow the competition out of the water. We're using a closed loop cooler. To start us off, I've done in-depth videos on NZXT's Air RGB fans, Corsair's HD120 RGB fans, and the budget-friendly Amzetronics slash IGO RGB fans that you can find up here, but as a quick summary, you can find all the fan stats up on screen. None of these figures have been determined by me, as I lack the equipment for this kind of verification. All numbers were pulled from their respective website pages. Before getting to setup, performance, and lighting effects, the first thing I want to say is none of these components are interchangeable and their RGB controllers are all mostly not standard and or proprietary. Thermaltake, Corsair, and NZXT all have their own controllers and they cannot be swapped or used in conjunction with utilities like Asus Aura or MSI Mystic Lite. If you want to mix and match, too bad. You'll end up having a bunch of controllers just hanging out, like my tummy on Thanksgiving or Valentine's Day. Quickly going through setup, NZXT's Air RGB fans require the NZXT Hue Plus. The fans have a 4-pin fan cable that goes to your motherboard or your fan controller, and then another cable that goes to the Hue Plus unit. From there, you can connect fan to fan and daisy chain them per the in and out ports on each fan. Each Hue Plus has two channels, and each channel can support up to five fans or four LED strips. You cannot mix fans and LED strips on the same channel. The Hue Plus connects to the motherboard via internal USB 2.0 and is powered by Molex. Corsair's HD and SP RGB fans need a Commander Pro or a Node Pro to work in the same way or a button controller that comes with certain fan packs. If you use the physical controller, you don't need a Node Pro or a Commander Pro, but you will be limited on color and effect options. The Node Pro is similar to NZXT's Hue Plus in terms of function, but if you want to learn more about the Commander Pro, you can watch this video up here. The Node Pro and Commander Pro each connect to the motherboard via internal USB 2.0 and receive power via SATA. Thank you, Corsair. Do note that the lighting hub for the fans also requires SATA power. Each HD and SP RGB fan has two cables coming out of it. One is for the 4-pin or 3-pin fan connector for the HD and SP models respectively to go into the motherboard or a fan controller, and the other is for lighting. Each one must be connected to a lighting fan hub that comes with the fans. Each lighting hub can support up to six fans, and then that hub connects to either the Node Pro or the Commander Pro or the physical controller. The Node and Commander have two channels each. Each channel supports one lighting fan hub, which means up to six fans or four LED strips. Again, LED strips and fans cannot share a single channel. If you want an RG beast of a machine, you could theoretically connect up to two Node Pros to the Commander Pro for a total of six channels, that is up to 24 LED strips or up to 36 RGB fans, effectively turning your computer into a unicorn's mating call. All while taking up only one internal USB 2.0 header. Thermaltakes fans each only have one cable that looks like a USB 2.0 connector, but with a modified pin layout. Up to five fans can be connected to the included control box, which connects to the motherboard through an internal USB 2.0 cable and again receives power via Molex. The control box can be daisy chained with up to 15 other control boxes, and that is 16 in total, giving you the option to have up to 80 RGB fans in one system. Just in case you wanted to turn your computer into the galaxy's flashiest rocket. All fans mentioned up to this point have PWM control with the exception of the SP120 fans, which are limited to voltage control only. The AMZ Tronix fans, being a more budget-oriented option, have no such luxury. You get two speeds, slow and fast. The AMZ Tronix or IGO RGB fans have a six-pin connector, four of which use the 50-50 LED standard connection, and the last two are for fan speed. It is not compatible with Aura or Mystic Light out of the box, but will theoretically work if you split the cable. The only connector cable on the fan is proprietary and connects to the included controller, which can support up to eight fans in total. To control the lighting, the controller must be connected to another switch, like your case's reset button, and the power to the controller is taken via... Molex. Pressing that reset switch, or whatever switch you set it to, will cycle through colors and effects, but to control fan speed, you need to press the button on the controller itself. So now that we're all hooked up, let's give them a whirl. The first configuration we'll use consists of the i7-5820K CPU clocked at 4GHz at 1.3V with the Deepcool Captain 240EX all-in-one cooler. The case will be the Corsair 570X with its front panel and dust filter removed so there is nothing impeding the airflow except for the radiator itself. I won't be using exhaust fans, so we'll be ignoring the graphics card for our radiator test. The CPU will be brutalized with Prime95 for 2 hours, the first hour to get the liquid to stabilize at a temperature that I can share with confidence 
and a second hour to collect the average temperatures across all cores. The test will be repeated two times afterwards, and an average of all results is what will be massaged into your eyeballs and ear holes. Normalizing the ambient temperature to 25 degrees Celsius, the stock fans for the Deepcool Captain 240EX bring our CPU average to a strong 73.37. The NZXT Air RGB 120 fans on the same rad perform a bit worse, yielding a temperature of 76.77, most likely due to their optimization for airflow and not static pressure. The SP120 and HD120 fans show 76.17 and 73.43 respectively, which makes sense considering the SP fans RPM limit of 1400 and the HD fans ceiling of nearly 1800 and strong affinity for static pressure. The AMZ Tronix fans, being the most budget of the bunch, spit out the highest temperature of about 78.07 degrees, but given that they're almost a third of the price of some of the competition, not too shabby. Considering how much I like this case, I put a ring on it. Twice. The Thermaltake fans gave a pretty good result of 75.33 degrees Celsius, which means our best performer is actually the stock solution on the Captain 240EX cooler, with Corsair's HD fans coming in a close second. Our second configuration will consist of the Xeon E52690 V3 processor at 1.3 volts cooled by the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 3 cooler, because I would rather swap out motherboards than swap out cooling solutions. In this case, we're only looking for the temperature differences between fans, so this change should be fine for our purposes. Again, we are not running exhaust fans, but we'll be using Furmark to pick on our 980 Ti Amp Extreme from Zotac with its own fans locked at 1500 RPM, since there is no radiator to impede airflow. Air coolers stabilize significantly faster than water coolers, so this test will only be done for one hour. 30 minutes to ensure stabilization, and 30 more to collect the averages, then repeated twice more for more averages. Normalizing the ambient temperature to 25 degrees Celsius again, our stock fans come out swinging with a CPU temperature of 74.13 and GPU temperature of 66.8. The NZXC Air RGB fans don't do quite so hot. Or do they? at 74.9 and 65.9 for the CPU and GPU respectively, you tell me. Corsair's SP120 fans are in a similar boat, averaging 74.42 for the CPU and 64.5 for the GPU. The HD fans fare a bit better, yielding 73.8 and 64.8 for CPU and GPU respectively. The AMZ Tronix fans hold up admirably here, CPU and GPU reflecting 75.43 and 68.1 degrees Celsius. Thermal take solution could probably do with a little more thermal taking, the CPU average here was at 75.88 degrees Celsius, and the GPU temperatures beat out the budget fans by just under a degree. To sum it all up, if you want the best performance given the fans I just went over, the stock fans on the Captain 240EX cooler seem to perform very well, beating the competition on the radiator by a hair, and coming in second on air. If you definitely need your RGB fix, the Corsair HD RGB fans look to be the best option. If you're not into how they look, the rest of the fans have fairly comparable performance within a couple of degrees, so I would just go over whatever you think looks best. Prime95 was used for putting the computer under load, and power will fluctuate, causing changes in temperatures. So, while running multiple tests per fan reduces the chance of inaccurate results, it is not a foolproof method. Obviously. Since I'm the one doing it. And now that that's out of the way, let's see if their bark is worse than their flight. Blight? Bite? Now that was probably a big data dump, and I'm sure that's not too much fun for some of you, so maybe this demo will lighten the mood. The NZXT Air RGB fans are controlled via their cam software. You get access to the following effects. Fixed, 
Breathing. Fading. Marquee. Covering marquee. Pulse. Spectrum wave. Alternating. And candle. Then the smart tab allows you to control lighting based on your PC status. You have access to GPU temperature, CPU temperature, and FPS. The custom tab lets you adjust the LEDs individually, and then you have access to fixed, breathing, and wave. The last two tabs are for audio reactivity and CSGO shenanigans. Corsair's HD and SP fans can be controlled with a physical controller or Corsair Link if you've connected them through the Note Pro or Commander Pro. With the controller, the SP fan effects are static, pulse, seizure, and a pulse flicker combo. And then you have access to blue, purple, white, red, orange, yellow, which kinda comes out looking yellowy orange, and green. Using Link, the SP fans have access to all 16.77 million colors and have access to rainbow, color shift, color pulse, static, temperature, strobing, and sequential. Back to the controller, the HD fans have access to blue, purple, white, red, orange, yellow, and green. And then you have these eye catchers. Static, pulse, flicker, sequential, marquee, rainbow, and demo. But when you move these over to Link, you get access to the following instead. Rainbow Wave, Rainbow, Color Shift, Color Pulse, Color Wave, Static, Temperature, Visor, Marquee, Strobing, Sequential, and obviously the 16.77 million color spectrum. The AMZ Tronics fans are much more simple. You have access to the solid colors of red, green, blue, purple, light blue, light green, and white. And then you get a color cycle, color fade, and a breathing effect that cycles through all colors and then off. And lastly, the Thermaltake fans enter the ring. They're controlled with their cleverly named Ring Plus RGB software. You've got Wave, Full Lighted, which is basically static, Copy Color, which mimics the first fan, Sound Control 1, Sound Control 2, Sound Control 3, Thermal, Flow, RGB Spectrum, Ripple, Blink, and Pulse. Other notes regarding each fan and its respective system, the NZXT fans look great in the right environment, but the slower lighting effects can look fairly choppy. NZXT's ecosystem is nice in the sense that if you have one of NZXT's RGB coolers and their LED strips and their Grid Plus fan controller, they can all be organized in their cam software. And on that note, you'll have to tolerate the cam software. I'll give them credit for updating it all the time, but I feel like something breaks every time they try. Sometimes devices aren't detected, and it can only be fixed with a restart or a reinstall. Sometimes. And then other times, the software doesn't properly read sensors and it spits out a bunch of zeros at me instead. In regards to Corsair Suite, the lighting effects in both the fans and LED strips are very fluid, even at the lowest speeds. But the caveat here is that the max speed isn't quite as zippy as the competition. 
Still smooth though, just not as quick. Corsair Link is pretty cool. You can find a lot of stuff in there, especially if you've inserted the whole carousel of Corsair components, like their power supplies, or AIOs, or RAM, etc. Link allows you to quickly switch between profiles, changing lighting and fan curve simultaneously. In fact, there may be too much stuff in there, to the point where it almost looks cluttered. I kind of wish there was a way to enlarge some of these panels and hide others. For example, I don't need to see my RAM timings all that often. I'd rather keep that out of sight and have the temperatures be larger and easier to read at a glance. The last noteworthy thing here is that Link can be a bit of a resource hog sometimes. Cam can be active and use anywhere from 0.2 to 0.4% of my CPU, where Link usually sits between 3 to 5%, occasionally spiking up to 10 to 15. If it ever gets that high, restart the application and it'll return to normal. Leaving Link running in the background brings CPU usage down to below 1%, but then you won't have it up to keep an eye on things. I'm sure complaining about Corsair's software probably doesn't matter much at this point. I'm fairly certain they're aiming to replace both Link and Q with one solution, but I'm not 100% sure when that's going to happen or if it's going to happen. It could be tomorrow, it could be in the next week, it could be in the next year. But if it's tomorrow, boy that would make me look dumb. As for thermal take, their fans have good lighting coverage from all sides. Unfortunately, some of the lighting effects at lower speeds look like a game running at 5 FPS. Even at higher speeds, it can still appear to be a bit jerky, and then the ring itself has some pretty intense hotspotting. But on the bright side, you get a lot of pretty neat effects. Thermal Take software isn't really as user-friendly. Lighting customization could be easier if they allowed you to click and drag and select several LEDs at once instead of clicking one at a time. And while Thermal Take allows for multiple profiles, it doesn't look like you can set up custom fan curves. You're stuck with whatever Thermal Take's preset options allow. Also, the software refuses to open if you have all your audio devices disabled. So that's... odd. And lastly, the Amzetronics fans have no software to commend or complain about. But voltage or PWM control would have been kind of nice. Finding a way to control the fan speed without putting a button on the little hub, which is probably inside of your case, would have been pretty convenient too. In terms of lighting, they're super simple, but also super budget oriented. I just wish there was a way to lock one color into the breathing effect. And now what is the price you pay for RGB? NZXT's Air RGB fans start at 30 US dollars for the 120mm version and jump to 35 bucks for the 140. Corsair's SP fans are 20 dollars each and the HD 120s and 140s go for 30 and 35 respectively, but you'll want to make sure you're getting the packages that come with the controller and the lighting hub that you will need. The AMZ Tronics fans come in a triple pack for 40 US dollars in total, and the Thermal Take Ring Plus Premium Edition fans featured in this video go for about 100 dollars for three of them and the controller. Each company offers different packages for more purchasing options, so you'll want to look around to see what fits best in your case. If you're looking for a more personal opinion, most of the fans cool well enough so that the performance isn't really a huge concern for me. Also, my testing is not perfect. The numbers I came to are just to give a general idea. In terms of user friendliness, during install, AMZtronics and Thermal Takes option might be the best, since each only have a hub and a single cable coming from the fan. Just keep in mind that AMZ Tronics has that proprietary connector, and Thermal Takes connector is larger than a normal 4-pin cable, so you may have trouble routing those in certain places or getting extensions. NZXT's depends on your configuration. Daisy chaining helps keep the cables localized, but if there's a considerable space between one fan and the next, you may find that the extensions come up a bit short. Corsair's fans avoid this problem since each fan has its own lighting cable and fan connector, but because of this and the lighting hub and the controllers you may need, this makes managing the cables a borderline nightmare. nightmare. In terms of appearance, I think it depends. Obviously, I think the Corsair HD fans look best in a case that boasts tempered glass everywhere. And they look good regardless of which way they're facing. Unlike the rest of the fans, Corsair's HD option have no diffusion on them, meaning the LEDs are exposed. Some of you might like the harsh light, some of you might not. Their SP fans shine pretty bright and the color is nice and soft, but these only have 4 LEDs, so customization and effect options are slightly limited. Their white fan blades, while promoting LED brightness, also means they might actually attract more attention than you really want. Regarding the LEDs, they are not individually addressable like Thermal Takes and NZXTs. The fans can be given individual effects, but you cannot assign a particular color to a single LED within the fan. The NZXT Air RGB fans have a slightly more subtle look, given the black fan blades and diffusion ring. So, if you're looking for RGB, but you want it a little more subdued, this would be the way to go. Unfortunately, some of the slower effects appear a little choppy, and the fan's casing doesn't allow light to pass through the exhaust side of the fan. Thermal Takes fans look good from almost any side because of that slick ring, so they'll work in any spot in your case. 
but like the RRGB fans, some of the effects are a little choppy. Additionally, you don't have access to RGB LED strips like the ones NZXT and Corsair offer. Not yet, at least. As far as I know. The AMZ Tronics fans, despite their white dampeners, are also somewhat stealthy, given the diffusion ring and the black body and fan blades. Similar to the NZXT fans, light does not show through the exhaust end of the fan, so mounting options are a little more limited. And so finally, that is all I have to say about that, and if for some reason you hated this video, you can go ahead and blow me. I've been doing that a lot lately. You know, fan testing and stuff. I mean, come on. This was exhausting. I'm not sure how much more I can intake. No amount of fans are gonna make me cool. As always, leave me questions if you've got them. Thanks for watching, my name is Steven, and unlike everything else in this video, aside from those stock fans, I am a little dim. Bye bye. And here's where the suffering begins, because I need my air conditioner, it's hot. So we'll be taking the thermal take ring plus R12, uh, uh, that's not how they go. We're using a closed loop cool, closed, closed, closed loop cooler, a closed loop cooler, a CLC, a, clo a closed loop cooler. The first thing I want to set, set before getting to perform, set up. The first thing I want to say is, it, it, you'll end up having a bunch of control, uh, you'll end up having a bunch of control, bunch, bunch of, you'll end up having a bunch of control, bun, bunch of controllers. Each lighting hub can support up to six fans and that, that's right, why I stop? And an average of all results is what will be massaged into your eyeballs and ear holes. <laughs> Since there is no radiator, ra radi radiator. Since there is no radiator to compete, impede, rats. What is compete? That's not a word, is it? Compete is a word, compete is not, as far as I know. Because there's no radiator, ra ra oh, that's a hard word still. Air cooler stabilize significantly faster than Waller, wa Waller, Waller coolers. That's good, because I would rather swap out motherboard fan, that's not right. It's not a foolproof, fool, foolproof method. NZXT's ecosystem is nice in the sense, in, in, in the sense, in the sense. I'm terrible at accents. I probably just offended a lot of people. Cam can be active and use anywhere, but anywhere, and they look regard, look, look rig, what? Boasts tempered glass everywhere, and oh man, everything else in this video except for those stock fans. My name is Steven, and wait, I mean I guess that's technically right. Unlike everything else, my name is Steven.